Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. Now, I'm broadcasting live from Chesapeake, Virginia today. And uh, I'm also uh, trans transmitting to uh, uh, YouTube, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Twitch. So all you users out there, uh, be glad to see you. Uh, uh, give me some comments on the chat room. I'll have the chat up here in a minute. And uh, give me some comments and questions. And uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, Gloria's in the studio with me today. Hello. Uh, she's going to monitor the broadcast and, uh, and keep track of the questions for me. So uh, she, I really appreciate her help. So uh, today I've got a special deal here. I'm wearing my red shirt because the color today, I'm going to focus on the color red. Uh, red is a beautiful color, and uh, we're going to go over that quite a bit today. Uh, let me show you uh, this picture here I had on the, uh, uh, let's see. These are the colors. These are the colors that are available in the Holbein uh, watercolor uh, palette. Uh, there are 18 varieties of red. They go, they go away from the dark reds all the way down to the lighter reds. They're beautiful colors. And I'm going to be using three of those today. Uh, opera, uh, pyro red, and alluthering crimson. And, uh, but I'm going to use three of those sets. And I've used, I'm going to use a lot more in the future. But uh, those are 18 beautiful colors. I'm going to take you to my, uh, my, my home page. And uh, I'm going to give you here. This is my home. This is my home page to my website. And you get there by going to your browser and just type in everswatercolors.com. It'll take you to this page. Uh, and I go down here. From there, you see the arrow moving. I'm going to go to the art supplies on the, on the uh, navigation bar on the left, uh, top left por portion of the page. Take you to art supplies. And this will take you down to uh, my art supply page, which uh, we provide uh, free shipping for orders over $50. And we do ship internationally. And I'll, I'll go by the spray bottles a little bit today. Now here, and there you go down a couple, a couple little clicks, and here are the 108 colors that are available on the website. And you go over here to the right side, and where it says order paints, you can click that on, and that'll show you all the colors, and the names of the colors here. That's where you find the colors that are available. And then over here to the right is where you add it to your cart. And uh, make your order through PayPal or through or through your credit card. But let me go back to uh, let's see, main camera. I want to take off that. So today I'm going to do a painting, and uh, I've called the painting Red Barn. And uh, you can see I've got my red shirt on today uh, to signify that I'm going to be focusing on the color red. But not only that, I'm going to be using the I'm going to use the primary. Uh, triad the red the yellow and the blue to mix all my colors so i'm going to go over to my painting table and uh let me get started i'll take you over to uh i got take you over to my overhead camera and uh, i'll take you over i'll switch you over right now i'm going to turn on the i'm going to turn on the chat okay the chat room is on there's my there's my page saying hi to you going over to my table Okay, the first thing you see here is this, is the uh, the color wheel, and you can see here that I have the a little bit of glare here from the light, but uh, I'll bring this up here so you can see it nicely. Okay, that's the color. This is the standard artist color wheel. And you can see the red, and of course the yellow here, the triad, the yellow, and then over here on this side is the blue, the triad. So that's the that's the triad I'm going to be painting today. But I'll be focusing a lot of reds, so primarily red. But then I'll be putting in yellow and blue uh, to mix my colors. Also here I have a quiller wheel. The quiller wheel is also a color wheel, and I use it. I use it quite often because the quiller wheel is another color wheel, but it gives me. Uh, it shows the actual colors. For example, uh, down here on ultramarine, ultramarine. Here's the here's the primary color here, which is cobalt. But here I'm using ultramarine blue today. And you can see it's not very far from the primary blue. 
but I, I can also see where when I mix that with the, the reds, I can see what colors I can get with the, with the blue and the, and the red mix. It gives me the purples and so forth. Another, another red, the red over here, it's a, a Lisbon Crimson is the primary red here on the quill wheel. And that's what I'm using. I'm using a Lisbon Crimson today as my primary red. But I'm also going to have a lighter, blue, a lighter red, which is a, a Opera. And up here, I'll be in up here in this color, I'll be using a, a bright red, uh, which is a pyro red. So I'm using this color, pyro red up in this area, and then the uh, the lighter red, which is opera down in this color. So I'm using a whole range of reds that I'll be using. And up here in the yellow, uh, lemon yellow is right up in this area, right at the very top. So that's another primary color right here. So I'm using two primaries basically, and the and the alyssum crimson primary off of the quarter wheel. And I can also see here, what I reason is I do is later on today on a painting, I'm going to be mixing a brown. Well, I can see here that the Luthan Crimson, uh, right here, if I mix that with a little bit of yellow, I should get a brown. And we're going to try that out today. So this is, this is why this wheel is very important. So I can look at this red and I can see, okay, what color I want to look for as a brown. And right here between the yellow and the, and that means I can mix it right there with those two colors. So we're going to try that today. So the color wheel is very important. I use it every time when I paint. And uh, okay. Hello from Tom Sneed from England. Tom Smee Sneed from England. Well, and, and welcome Roy, aboard, Tom. And Roy is watching. And Roy, okay. Yeah, Tom, I see you on my Facebook page quite often. So uh, yeah, I follow you along. I hope you'll be following me. Also, uh, also in preparation for this painting today, I did a color, a color mixing chart, and uh, it's very, it's very useful because when you before you do a painting, you want to know what kind of colors you can mix. Well, because I'm using the primary, uh, the reds, and here's the three. Here's here's opera, which is a nice light uh, pink color, and here's the pyro red, which is really my standard red I use, and then here's the lystrum crimson, which is the primary color from the color wheel. So those are the three reds I'm using today. Here I'm using uh, ultramarine blue, and here is uh, a lemon yellow, yellow lemon. Now what I did was on each one of these colors I mixed them with the other color. For example, uh, here when let me take this one here. Say uh, on uh, the opera I mixed it opera on top. Well you can see when you put another color on top of the same, it just gets darker. Uh, I, then I mixed the red with the opera. Of course, the red took over. It's so much more powerful than the than the uh, opera, but it gives you a nice little tone. Here, I put the Lutheran crimson along with the with the uh, opera, and it gave a little darker, much darker value. Here, I mixed the uh, uh, ultramarine blue with the opera. You can see here I get a, a, a light purple color. Here, I added water. So, if you're looking for a lighter value of a color, you just add water to it. So, here I added water to the opera and I get a very light tint. I get a tint. In the last column here I added yellow lemon to the opera. Here I get a little orangey. So yellow and red gives me an orange. Well it gives me a nice yellow, a nice orangey look. I did that with all the colors here. And I was mentioning brown uh, a little while ago about mixing brown. Well here's that alyssum crimson mixed with the uh, yellow lemon. Here it is right there. It'll give me a nice brown, and I can add a little bit of blue to it right here. I add a little bit of blue to it down here. That gives me a darker one. So I can paint my trees today. If I want a brown for a tree, I can use that color right there. And for green, of course, I'm going to use the ultramarine mixed with the yellow uh, lemon, and I'll get a nice green color. Okay? And I played around with the color mixes down here. So I can get greens, I can get oranges, I can get purples. By mixing the ultramarine with the, the red, I get a, a nice purple here with the, either with the uh, pyro red or a much darker purple with the uh, alyssum crimson. Here's alyssum crimson and the blue. So this mixing chart of the colors I'm using today on my palette for the painting, uh, just make that up. So I put the colors along here, then I hear it, and this is the mixing chart of all those colors. So there's a combination of all everything. Okay, so that's a good that's a good example of why you want to do a color chart uh, for your painting using the colors that you're going to use in the paint. Decide what colors you're going to use, then play with the colors, get a little mixing chart together, and then you can decide 
where you want to go with your colors and, and how much. Okay. Uh, so the three things, uh, a couple of things I'm going to worry about today. I got, uh, I have a light and medium and dark red of the primary red. Light, medium, and dark value of the red. So the first thing I'm going to decide today is what value do I need? Do I need a light? Do I need a medium or a darker red? And then I'll worry about the color. Do I want it uh, a little, we'll add a little blue to it? Do I want to add a little bit of yellow to it? So then I decide what color mix I want to make of that particular red. But the value is the most important characteristic I want to discover. I want it darker or lighter. And then I'll worry about what color. Also complementary, the complementary color of the red, if you go back to the color wheel, the complement of red is opposite in color wheel is the green. So the complementary color of red is green. So I want to have green in my painting to show, that'll show the reds off a lot better. So and then I have a way to mix green with my blue and yellow, I'll get the green. So I'll be worrying about value, what color mix I want, and then the complementary color that I want to use uh, with that red. So the tip today is going to be uh, think about the value first, and then the color second. That's my tip for today, and I'll be demonstrating that throughout the painting. Well, here's my uh, here's my reference photograph. Uh, I love old barns. This is an old red barn, so I figured a red barn uh, is a good sample, a good a good topic. And uh, I love to paint barns. I think a lot of, I've seen a lot of barn pictures, a lot of barn paintings. But there's an old barn with, uh, it looks like it's had better days, but it's got, it's an old rusty barn. It's made out, it looks like tin sides and probably a tin roof. And uh, it's got a lot of places that are falling apart and so forth. And look at the trees. I've got trees in the background. So I'll use some yellows and greens. And uh, look at the, all the reds. I can use the light red here. And I can use the darker reds in here. And of course, these shadows will be much darker. So we'll play around with the values right there. We're using the color red. And I see shadows on the on the eaves, uh, on the top of the roof. And there's a big shadow here cast by the, the doorway here up here on the on the, on the the loft. Uh, I, I was raised on a farm. I lived on a farm up until I went to uh, into the Marine Corps uh, when I was 21. And uh, I lived on a farm. And uh, of course, I lived, I had barns. I probably lived in three different places. Uh, with my family, and uh, I used to really play in the barn all the time. We had horses, and we had chickens, and and uh, other animals on the barn on the, around the farm. But uh, the barns are very important to me. I've been around them a long time. So uh, anyway, this is fascinating. So let me let me get started here. Let me let me continue on with my my presentation. That's my reference photograph. I'm a little bit excited today because I like the subject matter, and I can't wait to get started. But I want to go through my preliminary planning because I went through a lot of planning to do this painting. Now here's my uh, value study. And uh, what I did is I drew, the, uh, I drew the shape that I liked. It was a barn that, uh, from the photograph. And then I emphasized the, the value of the, the darks and the lights. And I'm gonna add some other areas of interest. I may put some animals here in the, in the, in the, yard, in the yard. And I've even got a little character over here inside the barn. So that, that's my value plan, okay? So I know where my darks and lights are going to be. Uh, it, it looks to me like from the photograph and from what from my drawing here, that the direction of the light is from over here to the right. So the direction of light is the lightest side here, and the darkest side is over here. So this is in light and this is in shadow. That's very important to know which, which way I'm going to go as far as the value of the colors. Okay. So I've done my, uh, I've done my drawing. I've done my color study. Know what colors I'm going to use, and then uh, I know I just did my value study. Uh, over here, I'm going to go through my colors with you, and, my, and what I'm going to use today for uh, for my tools. Here's my standard uh, studio palette. Here, I'm going to use uh, in the beginning. I'm going to use the the uh, silver brush paint brushes to do the background, the sky, and so forth. And this here's the small brush, and this is the large paintbrush and these are available on my on my website at watercolors.com. I'm going to use those today, the, the hate brush. Uh, I'm also going to use uh, the Holbein uh, synthetic three quarter inch flat. And this will get I'll be doing, doing most of the painting with this large flat brush. Most of the painting will be done with this. And then I've got the uh, the number eight round uh, 
Black Velvet from Silverbrush. It's a, it's a natural hair brush, and uh, I'm going to use that for detail for small for small areas and for for a light area like maybe the trees and maybe some of the other little areas on on the on the painting. So the colors I'm using today is uh, I've already talked about, but let's go through them. I'm going to I'm going to use Opera, which is a light red. I'm going to use Pyro Red, which is a medium value red, and Alizarin Crimson. Alizarin Crimson, which is the dark red. So light, medium, and dark reds. And I'm going to use the yellow lemon, which is the primary color. So these are three primaries here. The primary red, Alizarin Crimson is the main primary. These other two are lighter values. The yellow lemon is the second primary. And then, of course, ultramarine blue, which is the third primary I'm using. So there's the primary the red, yellow, and blue primaries I'm using in the painting. Okay. And on my palette, you'll see this is ultramarine blue over here at the top. And I have the, <clears throat> excuse me, I have the uh, uh, opera color red up here at the very top left. And then coming down, this is the Lutheran crimson, which is my dark red. Then I have pyro red right here in the middle on the left. And then I have the uh, lemon yellow, yellow lemon down here at the bottom left. So those are the one, two, three, four, five colors I'm going to use in the painting today. And then I've also got, uh, I transferred the drawing here to a quarter sheet of uh, Gemini watercolor paper. This is a 140 pound, 140 pound uh, archival, 100% cotton uh, watercolor paper. And it's very good. This is also available on my website, everestwatercolors.com. And later on, I'm also going to be playing with the, uh, I'm going to be adding uh, some color with my Palette in a Bottle, which is sold exclusively at everswatercolors.com. Uh, palette in a Bottle with uh, lemon yellow and uh, one and a Palette in a Bottle dot sprayer, both dot sprayers. Uh, this is ultramarine blue. So I'll be adding a little bit of texture to the trees probably using these two colors here. So I'm really, I'm, again, I'm just using the primary colors to uh, create the painting today. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do, uh, Starting, I'm going to start here with a lighter area. The lighter area over here, this is the light side of the painting right here. Light side of the bit. So this light side, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to start with the opera. I'm going to load the brush. And I'm going to use the flat brush stroke. And I'm going to just line it up here. Get that stroke across there. And what I'm going to pick up a little bit of I roll red because because I want to have a graded a graded wash. So I'm going to have a little. It's going to be a little bit darker out there and a little bit lighter there. Now you'll notice I'm not going to I'm not going to really going to wash out the brush today. I'm just going to pick up the colors off the table. Uh, now here's a here's the uh, the barn the barn side down here. I'm going to put a little more of that little darker pile of red in there to give the, the darker blue ed, uh, red edge. And so that's going to be the lightest, lightest color on the painting right there, as far as red goes. Okay. All right. Now, the next area I'm going to paint uh, is uh, the front side, which is, uh, remember, it's in shadow. So I'm going to start with a darker red. So I'm going to use, I'm going to start with uh, Alizarin Crimson. I'm going to load the brush. And I'm going to start right up here in the top. I'm going to start right up here next to the, I'm going to angle my brush and I'm going to go straight down. And uh, I'm going to pick up some more color here of alizarin crimson. I'm going to come over here on this side and next to this, this doorway here. I'm going to pick up, an, I'm going right back into the palette, pick up another color. Um, now I'm going to pick up a little bit of pyro red. Load the brush. Come up here, and I'm going to paint straight down. Vertical stroke. And then what I'm going to do now is take that pyro red. I'm going to go over here now and just put my brush into the ultramarine blue. I'm not going to rush. I'm not going to uh, wa wash the brush out. I'm just going to go over there and pick up some blue. I'll pick up a little bit of blue. It'll turn it into a purple. 
I'm going to come down here. Use the edge of the brush to get a little detail. Pick up some more of that pyro red. Come down along the side here. Now I'm going to pick up a, a little bit of, uh, let's see, let's pick up a little bit of yellow. I'm going to be dancing around my palette today. A bit of pyro red mixing a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to come down here and continue on down here with another color. Pick up a little bit of that uh, alis alizarin crimson. Come on down. So this is going to be a very very colorful barn. I'm going to turn my uh, turn my painting around so I have uh, an angle that I want to put. Put the angle of the brush and it comes straight down. Pick up a little more uh, now on that alizarin crimson. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that a little bit of the uh, blue, the ultramarine blue. Come down. That'll be a much darker red. Actually, by adding blue to any color, like red, it'll make it a darker red. It may be, have a purple, may have a lean toward purple, but it's still a red color. And I'm going to go back into, uh, use the pyro red. So each one of these brush strokes is uh, sort of uh, uh, simulating uh, boards on the, on the barn. And uh, I'm not worried about making this. A, this is, I'm not worried about making this a uh, a tin barn. I'm making it into a wooden a wooden structure. And if I lay the brush down, I get a little bit of brush, a little bit of dry brush stroke, which gives me a broken a broken color there, which is nice. This gives me maybe a little wear and tear on the board, which is what I'm trying to do. I pick up a little more of this pyro red here. Come over here on this side. Uh, I need to angle that. I want to get my rooftop here. Come straight down the edge. So just by using this uh, three-quarter inch brush, which is all I need to have uh, in painting this whole structure. Pick up some more of that pyro red and finish off this section right here. So if I lay the brush down uh, a little flatter, I get a broken edge. You can see some of the broken color here. And if I lay, if I bring it up, if I, if I bring the angle up a little higher, uh, then I get a, uh, I get a nice smooth stroke. So I, I kind of broke that up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to take the, uh, take a little more of this uh, lithium crimson. And there's some boards over here. Uh, these are boards also on this side. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to put in this section here I'm painting I'm painting this, there's boards here on this side so I'm kind of coming in getting uh, an angle so that's the front of that board and then there's a little piece over here so I gotta turn my painting around a little bit get the angle uh, this there's, there's another little Looks like a little uh, part of the of the barn. It was a little overhang over on this side. A little part of a shed or something. Looks like part of it fell down. So at least there's a little structure still left there. And then there's a little piece here. There's a little brace here holding this up. So I'll put that in. Okay. I'm going to let that dry just a little bit. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put the rooftop in. The rooftop is going to be a dark color. So I'm going to take the, the darkest color I have, which is uh, the blue, ultramarine blue, mixed in a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson. This alizarin crimson with uh, the blue will make this almost black. It's going to be a very dark color. So this is the rooftop. I'm going to put the rooftop in. And you don't see much of the roof because it's such a, a tall angle that we're just going to see just a trace of the rooftop. But that's all we need to see. Just indicate the eave, the end of the roof, and the top of the roof. And that's all we have to indicate. And, of course, the little peak up here. 
and it'll be another I'll, now I'm using the I'm using the edge of the brush so I'm forming a brush as I pick up the brush I'm forming a sharp edge so it's just like a razor so then I can do a draw I can draw a straight line with that I can draw a straight line and make a straight straight as I want it to but this is an old barn so I don't want it to be perfect so I want to have a little couple jagged edges showing which is fine and there's a little rooftop over here I'll put a little roof on this show that there's a little a little structure is still over here, whatever's left. And there's the rooftop here on this little shed, this little shed that juts out on the side here. So we'll use that same color. Go back in the old, remember I, have, I haven't washed my brush out yet. All I've done is been picking up different colors. So by moving around in the palette, I picked up different colors in the palette. Let's pick up a dark or a light. I don't worry, don't worry. This is another thing I've learned in painting over the years that you don't need to wash the brush out all the time. Even if, even when you're changing, I'll show you here in a few moments, even when you're changing colors, you really don't have to wash the brush out that much. So this is a dark value here. This is a dark value here for the rooftop. Okay, it's coming along pretty good. That's a basic top uh, shape of the barn. Let me go ahead and I'll get some a little bit of detail in here now. Uh, let me pick up a little bit of this red. And here's what I mean by not washing out the brush. All I'm going to do now is pick up some red, this pyro red, which my brush had some blue in it, but right now I'm replacing it now with a pyro red. So I'm going in building a puddle with the pyro red. And I'm not worrying. I'm not worrying about washing the brush out at all. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this doorway. I mean this uh, this top doorway up here. And I'm going, to, um, I'm going to mix another color in there. It's going to be a little bit of that opera, a little bit of opera in there. I'm, I'm going to mix up the color just a little bit. Okay. And uh, I will read. I, I'm really... Just want to get just enough paint in the brush not too much now hit on what i'm gonna do now i i can take instead of worrying about cleaning i can just hit the sponge hit the sponge and that takes out most of the water and then i'm going to go over here i'm just going to hit this doorway over here it's a little bit of, it's the door that's open up to, to the upper window of the hayloft And haylofts are a lot of fun. I used to, my, I had two brothers and we'd go up in the hayloft and play uh, fall in the hay and, and uh, have a good old time. So and I, I took a tissue and I want to pick that. I want that to be just a little bit lighter. So I hit that with, remember, I'm looking at values. I wanted, to be a, I wanted this to be a lighter color. I wanted this to be lighter than this because this, this is in the, in the light, more in the light. This is more in the dark. So this is, this is the lighter value. Okay, now there's uh before I go any further, I think I still got some reds here. I'm gonna I'm gonna build up a darker value. Uh, so I'm gonna mix I'm gonna mix a little bit of color. I'm gonna mix a little bit of this yellow. Uh, with the lithium crimson. Listen, now look, see how it turns brown already. Listen, listen crimson and the brown. You can see that's already a brown color. Now just put a touch of blue with that. Now I get a dark, I get the darkest color. I get as dark as I want to go. It's going to give me a dark brown. Now I'm going to go in there as a, uh, this door is open. So this is, this is going to be the shadow side of inside of the barn. I'm gonna pick up another brush. I use the, I'm gonna use the uh, uh, the silver brush, you know, the black velvet, and I'm gonna put just a little bit of water here in this corner. Just a little bit of water. I'm gonna put a little bit of water there. Just adding water. And I'm gonna take this brown that I have in this brush, and I'm gonna go over here. And I'm gonna come up, and I'm gonna gradually put that into that mixture of water. 
because what I want to do now is show that this is a little bit uh, of light showing into this opening. Okay, I don't want I don't want to have it totally black. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a little bit of grading here by adding just a little bit of water in that corner. So that'll give me the uh, uh, the impression that the, the doorway was, there's light shining inside of that opening. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing down here. Based on this darker color. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'll take a little bit of water on the on the on the smaller brush and I'm going to wet this little corner down here. And what this does, this this will simulate the the shadows inside that doorway, but also show that there's a little bit of light. A little bit of light going inside there, just a little bit, sneaking into the corner there. So I'll take this brush here, and what I'm doing is adding the water to that mix. I'm bringing the color now into the water to give it a little bit of... Remember, when you add water, I showed in the beginning, when you add water to a color, it just makes it lighter. So that's what I'm doing. I'm lightening that color. It's a dark, a dark brown, now I'll make it into a light brown near the doorway. Okay, now I got one more area I want to put a shadow in. This area over here under in the shed. So this area here, uh, this could be a little a little workspace, or could be part of the chicken coop. They might have chickens living in here at one time. But uh, each barn always has has a place to store tools, or even a tractor. Uh, farm equipment, you know, tools that are used on tools that are used on the farm. You store them in the, you store them in the shed. So I'll come down here a little bit. Of this now I'm going to add a little more water. Just take water with a small brush. Now I'm going to build a little bit of of light, a little bit of light value here. And we'll let this dry. And uh, I can go back into the palette and add a little more color into that. You make it a little darker. You can always add color to... It's always easier to make things darker than it is to make lighter. Once you get the paint down, it's easier, easier to darken it up than it is to lighten it once, it's, once the paint's down. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is take a take a tissue and I'm going to pick up some of this extra extra moisture. I got it's a lot of moisture I put in there. So I'm going to take the brush now. I'm going to pick up a little bit of moisture. So this is like a vacuum cleaner. I'm just uh, picking up some of the extra water. A little more color in here. I want it to be just a little bit darker than, than what it is. It's like a shadow. Okay. All right, now let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and put some of the trees in now. So I got a couple trees on the side. This is real, be real quick. And before I do that, though, I want to do the, I got to do the background. So uh, put this brush aside for a second. And I'm going to wet the, uh, wet the background with just water. I'm going to use the Hake brush. The big hake, the large hake. I'm going to wet the sky with water. So pre-wet the paper. Uh, this will make the paint flow much easier. And a little bit of wet on wet technique. This hike brush really holds a lot of water. It's easy to put the water down and it wets the paper very nicely. And then I can put paint down there very quickly. Put that one away, pick up the, put up the smaller hake. Now I'm going to load it with uh, a little bit of uh, ultramarine.
and I'm going to go ahead and put the, the blue up in the sky. So I'm putting, uh, I'm using the heat brush to uh, fill in the color of the background. So I'm putting a little bit of blue up here. I pre-wet the paper with the, the large hake, and I'm going in with a small, small hake. I'm adding in the, the blue of the sky, the background. Always said you make it look easy. Now we'll go over here. Oh, I'm sorry? Roy said you make it look easy. <laughs> well, it's a... Uh, This part here, this part here, just trying to be careful not to not to put any color on top of the of what I've already started. Uh, you know, the part of part of painting is if you take if you got the time, you just take it, go nice and slow. Uh, when when you try to do something real fast, you do tend to make a little a little boo boo here and there. But there, I, I found in LR you can always correct most of the boo boos. Most of the errors can be corrected. Okay, that's a very simple background. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a hair dryer and blow it dry. Okay, now while I'm here, I got the well, I got the hate brush. I'm also going to do a little bit of a do a little bit of here in the foreground. So I'm going to put a little bit of color here in the foreground. So we'll take care of the big colors here. I'll wet that up a little bit, and I'm going to make, pick up a little bit of a uh, little bit of yellow. This little yellow brown I have down here. Wash out. Make sure I got the blue out of the brush. This is the only time I've changed colors because of these large areas. I don't want to mix in the blue yet with the foreground. So uh, I'm going to take a little bit of this. Uh, I mixed up a little bit of brown here with the, remember what, with the hallucinant crimson and with the yellow. So I've got a little light brown here in the corner. And that'll make a nice color for the, the ground here. Maybe a little dirt uh, driveway or something coming in here. It'll, it'll, it'll uh, color in this area very nicely. A little bit of dry brush here, just to show a little texture. Make the corners a little darker. Keep the eyes, just keeps the eyes into the painting. You don't want your viewer to be uh, distracted by going to the outside with too much. You want the darker corners, uh, keep the painting a little darker. So, and again, those are little details to worry about. Okay, let me dry it out a little bit.
Mm. Okay. I was using a Kleenex to just to mop up some of the moisture. It didn't it wasn't it was that important. I just trying to dry it up a little faster. So the Kleenex is just to pick up. Now, uh, you feel the back of your hand. That's that's pretty dry. Now I'm going to use some of that brown. I'm fix. I'm finished with the hate brush now. Put the hate brush away. Uh, the hate brush did all the big areas. So now I'm going to go a little more detail now. So I'm going to mix a little bit of that uh, alizarin crimson, alizarin crimson, and a little bit of that yellow. And I know I'll get a brown. And there's my brown. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and paint in some of these trees. I got a tree over here. And I can mix in a little bit of blue. I, I don't want to have all brown, so I'll put a little bit of mix a little bit of black in there. And black. When I add uh, when I add, add blue to the brown, it makes it real dark, but also it makes it almost black. Depends on again, it depends on how much color you put in a mixture. Uh, the more color you put in, especially blue, the darker it gets. So this brown will become almost black if you put a lot of blue in there. So I'm just kind of building a little a little structure here. Uh, this is a tree that's growing here next to the barn over here on this side. So we're gonna put this here. Uh, put some branches up here. And I'm gonna do this done very quickly because I just want to show. Show the process. Showing the process is just as important as the painting, is the process of how to do it. The more time you put on it, of course, the better you get at what you're doing. And the neater, the neater, the more careful you are with the strokes, uh, the better things will look and so forth. Now over here is another tree. I got a nice big tree over here. So I'm going to put in a, and I'll put a little bit of more, some more brown. So I'm mixing that brown, but I'm putting a little bit of dark, I'm putting a little bit of ultramarine in there to make it a dark, make it a dark brown. I'll bring that up here. I'm using this small brush because it, it almost I can almost use it like a rigger, as I, I can do a broad stroke by pushing down on it and get a broad stroke for a, a broad mark like the trunk. Just by pushing down on the brush. This is a natural hair brush. Uh, squirrel hair or whatever, but it's still natural hair. So it's very it's a very soft brush, so it does a lot of detail. But the point of this, I can bring it up and I can make nice fine lines just by dragging it uh, up to the edge of the point. So I can get nice, sharp, almost like a rigger or a liner brush. So I can get really very, very detailed uh, on the edges. And here I'll just uh, make some long branches. This, this tree over here has got more longer branches than the other one. That makes it a little bit different. Okay, that gives me enough uh, structure there to do that. So now what I want to do now is I'm going to add in a little more. Uh, well, you know what? I'm not finished with the hake brush because I need to go back and do, uh, do some leaves. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build some leaves. So I'm going to uh, put a little bit of this yellow, a little yellow lemon, and I'm going to mix a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And that'll give me a green. And I can make a, add more blue in here to give me a darker mix or light. So I got like a, a paint trail here. I've got a, a, a dark green, a middle green, and I got a light green. So I've got quite a, quite a combination here of different colors of greens. Okay, so I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take the brush, squeeze, push it down, give me some. And I'm gonna go in here and just uh, put in the, the texture of the tree.
So with this hate brush, I can do cover a lot of territory here, putting a lot of texture in here, uh, a lot of color movement. And come right on down here. And I'll put a little bit of a uh, little bit of grass down here in the bottom. I'll put a little bit of grass down here next to the tree, in front of the tree, around the tree, along the edge of the barn. A little bit of texture here. Okay, on this side, this side, this side, the, the tree is a little different. It's a little bit. Uh, this one has more limb, uh, leaves and, and less limbs. This one over here has more limbs and less less leaves. So I'm going to make this a, a, a more open a more open configuration of the tree. Just by using the edge of this brush. And I'm leaving lots of uh, openings here. These are sky holes that we can have for the birds to fly through, and you can see the sky behind. And the same way over here, I'm going to put uh, a little bit of texture, a little bit of blue and yellow mixture together. And this will be grass down here next to the barn. Grass and weeds and bushes. Because this old barn now has, you know, been, uh, been, not falling down, but it's uh, you know it's had a lot, had a hard life, so it's got got some tall trees and tall bushes around it. Okay, now I want to go ahead and put in a, a pallet in a bottle, dot sprayer. This is uh, now I use a very just do a light tapping motion, and you can see the dot pattern that I'm uh, uh, that I'm getting here on the trees. This gives me the Indication of leaves, and I think that's uh, something this dot, this dot sparrow can do. And then I can pick up the uh, the dot sprayer, the pallet in a bottle dot sprayer with uh, ultramarine in it. And over here, I can put a little darker values over here, a little darker, a little darker color. And then go back in with that yellow. The yellow and that blue will mix to give me a green also. So I'm getting a mixture here. I'm mixing with the, the spray bottles a little bit. And now that's still wet. So when it dries, it'll look a lot, a lot different than that. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is do a little, do some cleanup and add some detail. So uh, I've got some, um, some chickens down here. <laughs> Chickens here in the foreground, so I'm going to use a little bit of alizarin crimson, alizarin crimson, and I make a brown chicken. And what you what you need to do when you do uh, an animal or something, like that, you need to practice the shape. So I've done uh, I've done a little bit of practice on on chickens, and uh, I used to have chickens on the farm, so I've been around a lot of farm animals. Uh, which is which is which is an advantage, I guess. But uh, also, you can find a photograph of a of an animal or a chicken or whatever, and then you can uh, uh, practice the shape. I'll make this make the colors just a little. Now these uh, make me a, a darker feathered chicken over here. And uh, they're they're eating uh, they're eating some chicken feed here that's been placed out by the by the farmer on the ground. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm using the uh, using the natural hairbrush from uh, Silver Brush, and uh, 
it's a nice little brush. It does a, a light. I, see here, here I'm getting. See, I'm using the fine tip of the brush where I can get a lot of detail, and uh, I can get small, small marks with this brush. And uh, the legs on here. Uh, this is the. This brush is a silver brush, number eight round. It's a good size. It's a good size. Uh, anything smaller, it would, you'd be uh, must well work with a rigger or some smaller brush. But this this is a good size brush. It's a, like a medium size. It's not too big and not too. Long. I got larger brushes, but this is good for detail. Uh, I'll do one more. A little another brown chicken over here. You know there are white there are white chickens or brown chickens or black chickens or red chickens so all kinds of colors you can make them any color you want uh, as long as you get a decent looking shape. Uh, I think a shape the shape and the size uh, affect how big it is where it is the surroundings is next to the barn so it, you're going to you're going to automatically say, hey, that's a chicken, just by looking at the edge. And, and I decided to go ahead and put in a a rooster here, a rooster. And there's his red comb. I did a I did a painting a while back, and I'm going to I'm going to do a, a video on that. But I did a painting of a large rooster, and it was in watercolor. And uh, believe it or not, I did it with a with a palette knife. Did not use a brush. So um, I'm going to get that on on YouTube here in the future. Okay. So. Roosters are very colorful, so I'm gonna make him colorful. You're gonna have a red. He's got a red chest, and I'm gonna put some blue, uh, darker feathers here underneath. Roosters are interesting because they uh, they wake you up in the morning. You hear the rooster crow. Time to get up. That's how I was trained. I got. I would get up with the. I would get up with the roosters. Go feed the. Go feed the animals. And I. I get up early every. I get up early today, uh, because I living on a farm. We lived, we had early hours. Go out and feed the animals and so forth. So I was trained real early to get up in the morning. And uh, so I, I, I've done that my whole life. Early Reveille, early Reveille, and the Marine Corps helped me too. I used to get up, up early to get up before the rest of the troops got up. Okay, one more little touch on him. Give him a little beak. Okay. And what I want to do now is put a little bit of shadow. I'm gonna just now I'm just gonna do some little bit of touch up. Now the final points I have is just to do little touches. Now I'm gonna put little shadows on the bottom. So a shadow, uh, I'm gonna use uh, the the reds I have. Again, I'm gonna use a palette mix here. I'm gonna use a little bit of a uh, little bit of red, a little bit of blue. Give me a purpley brown to color the ground more or less, but. Give me some kind of color here and I'm going to put a shadow. The light's coming from left to right, so we'll have the shadow basically out this way. Don't want to get it too dark. Remember, think about value. The value of a shadow is, is uh, darker than the ground, but you don't want to get it so dark that it's darker than the object. So we'll put this down here. So just quick, easy, just queasy shapes. 
with some over here just indicating shadows are very important they, they show they give a little bit of description of what's going on uh, I'm using a tissue to pick up a little bit of the paint to make them a little bit lighter and put more out here here we go Okay, now uh, the other fine points I want to do is I've got uh, I've got a character I got a spe I got a character inside this barn, so I'm going to put he's a little I'm going to put a bench in here or something a workbench or something. And then I'm going to put a I'm going to put a figure in here. Again, you don't you don't have to paint the whole thing, but just to, just to give an indication that there's something there. And let the uh, let the viewer's imagination uh, fill in the blanks. And that's what I'm going to do. It's just going to be a shadow. Uh, let the viewer figure let the viewer figure out what it is. Okay. Now on the barn itself, I'm gonna fill in some. I'm gonna fill in some of these uh, white areas. So I'm gonna pick up color I'm using the colors in the palette. I'm not gonna worry about mix. Not mixing anything. Not mixing anything new. Uh, just gonna clean up some of the edges here. Uh, some of these boards are are hanging out. Rough edges, which is okay. But I'm just right now I'm just eliminating some of the white spaces. Just cleaning up some of the edges. And there'll be uh there'll be a little there'll be a little shadow under this eve here. There's a the light coming off, off off the rooftop here. It'll cast a shadow on the side of the barn. So I'm putting a little bit of shadow here. Now there'll be a little bit of shadow under here. On this side, and it might be a cast shadow from the tree here. Let's let's put a little let's let's put the idea there's a maybe a cast shadow here from the tree uh, up here showing up on the on the side of the barn here. Okay, and then I've got a I've got a large shadow here on the top the top part of the barn. The roof There'll be a shadow coming down here, cast shadow on the eaves. There'll be a smaller one over here. Okay. And I think the I think the one of the neatest shadows I found was the. Let me put a little bit of red. Let me pick up some of that uh, viral red. And there, I'm gonna put a little bit of structure here of this back of this door there's a, a little bit of lumber here pulls the door together and then this shadow here I'm going, I'm going to use the bigger brush so I got more more control so let's see this will come down here This is a this is a cast shadow from this door that's open here. The door opened here in the barn, up in the hayloft, and uh, let me point this around here. Okay, 
just a few more little touches. I just want to I just want to close up some of these uh, white areas. And there's one other shadow, and I want to get. Um, there'll be a shadow under this window, under this section here, because this is the other. This is the other doorway. It's a doorway can open two ways, left and right. So there's a door. There's a little bit of overhang here. I want to indicate there that there's a little bit of overhang that comes from that side. Yeah, we don't need to do much cleanup because an old barn is uh, an old barn. It's okay. It's fine. Okay. All right. Let me uh, now. Let's, I'm going to put a frame around this and let's take a look at it. Uh, as far as the as far as the grass and so forth, uh, you don't have to do much. You don't have to do much uh, with the grass. I mean, you can put little shadows in the in there behind because the light's coming this way. So you might make this a little darker over here on the right side. There's there's a little a few little things that can be done added on you can put a little a little bit like I say a little bit of a dark energy a little shadow pattern in the grass a little texture uh, you can do a little bit around the barn and so forth like that but then you can add more things to the trees um, you can break up some of these uh, areas of color here in the, in the, in the limbs make these a little larger you can add more paint up there, but everything else is just fine, just very fine tuning and minor. Okay, those were done with a dot spray bottle, and I could add take the dot spray bottle with just this is the paddle in the bottle with just water in it, plain water. What I do there, I can go up here and add a little bit of water on top of those colors, and that what that does that spreads that color out. Okay, so these spray bottles. Uh, uh, available on my website. These are exclusive on EvertsWaterColors.com. But these these spray bottles, I have a whole set here of all the colors of my palette, and I use them all the time. Now, the other there are other videos on my uh, on my website, EvertsWaterColors.com. That I have a whole ton of videos on uh, uh, how to use a spray bottle and the other spray bottle techniques. This is just very one one small one. So let's put a frame around this. Now I was gonna mat this thing. Uh, let's start out with just a plain, plain white mat. Now I gotta wait my make sure my hands are clean now. And uh, let's put a let's just put a plain white mat with maybe a little border on it. And I can bring that down. So I mean that's that's one way. Uh, they that kind of shows it off very nicely with a, a white a white border with a little bit of uh, blue there on the edge. Uh, I can also I can also add, just swap it out and put a a burnt sienna border on it or a red or a red border. Oh, well, that's very nice. That also shows off the trees and so forth. And if I wanted to, <laughs> if I want to go really wild, you know, I could just go. I could, I could add a darker color. So you can go dark and go dark to light. So I would recommend probably the white, but the right border. I think that's the one that shows it off better. And uh, and let me put this aside. I'm going to show you one I did earlier. Uh, it's a little, it's almost the same, but it's just a little bit different. Now here's another one. Here's one I did earlier to show you uh, to take your time a little bit more, time a little more careful on the edge. But this is. This one here is, uh, uh, to me, it's it, it's not, uh, it's okay. Uh, I like to have a little more rugged. I'd probably put a little more texture in some of the places. But this is more of a, a cleaned up version of the barn. Uh, I put some I put some marks on the on the boards to show there were boards there. You could put just put some, uh, just use a brush and go in and do a little little board mark to show us boards and so forth like that. And but that that turned out pretty nice too. But this, as far as the demonstration painting, uh, the demonstration painting was to show you all the techniques I used and and the uh, sort of the uh, approach I would take to to uh, paint something like this. And really, today remember today we were emphasizing the color red. I used uh, three values: the light, medium, and a dark value. 
of reds. And then I, first of all, I decided what colors, I, what, what value I was going to use first, the light over here and the dark. Uh, that was the value choice. And then the complementary value, of course, the complementary color, of course, is green. And the green really sets off the red. That's why I chose these big trees around the around the, uh, the red barn. The, the green the green trees really uh, make the red pop out. So by using different values, uh, different brush strokes, and by using a complementary color, uh, you get the red really to stand out. And that was really what I was trying to get across today. So I hope you enjoyed that. And let's go back to uh, my main. Yeah. So. So I really enjoyed that painting today. Uh, as I said today, a barn is one of my favorite uh, subjects, and uh, I've painted a lot of barns before. Uh, this is a lot of fun. I, I added uh, uh, the color red, uh, which I thought would be uh, interesting today. I even wore my red shirt today to, to match match the colors. Uh, and then uh, I added the uh, the chickens in the yard and the and the rooster, and I gave it a little extra touches. So that was a lot of fun. I hope uh, you enjoyed that. And if you got questions or comments, uh, I'd like to hear from you. So give me a thumbs up and uh, give me a comment that helps in my rating. And also subscribe to my YouTube and uh, Facebook pages and YouTube channel. Sign up and uh, be a follower. I'd appreciate that. Now I'll be, uh, be back again next week on Thursday at 2 o'clock. So I'll see you next week. Bye for now.